Hey guys, it's Phil White, the Earth Sciences Librarian at CU Boulder. Um, this video I wanted to do a quick primer on uh, joining census data to a shapefile, which is an essential GIS task that everyone should know how to do. Uh, everyone should know how to do a table join. So we're going to do this. Uh, what we're looking at right here is uh, Boulder County, Colorado. Uh, these are all the census tracts in Boulder County. And um, I'm going to walk you through joining uh, some data from the census to this and sort of go through some of the pitfalls because uh, there's some little tricks that, and, and screw-ups that can happen when you're, when you're doing this. Okay, so uh, first of all, I've got my shapefile loaded. This is just a, a tiger line file from the U.S. Census. Um, so I've also got Social Explorer loaded here. Um, you could also get this from the American Fact Finder. I just find the Social Explorer interface to be a little bit easier. In Social Explorer, if you want to get a table, you need to go to the Tables tab over here. Um, I am going to choose the American Community Survey, um, which comes out more frequently than the 10-year census. And uh, I'm just going to go in here to the first option and uh, begin a report. And what you want to do here is first select your geography type. Uh, as we saw on the, on the, in ArcMap earlier, we had uh, census tracts. So I'm going to choose census tracts. And I'm going to choose Colorado. I'm going to select Boulder County. And then I'm going to choose all census tracts in Boulder County and add that. And then I'm going to proceed to the variables. So um, here you can search for a lot of variables. Um, Social Explorer kind of gives you some of the bread and butter ones here. Uh, lots of household demographics and things of that nature. Uh, you can explore all of the tables here. There are a lot more. Um, or you can even search by a keyword for a variable or use one of uh, Social Explorer's pre-made reports. Um, I'm going to go the easy route here and just go back to the Social Explorer's tables. It's the same data, just packaged a, a little bit nicer. Um, and for this one, uh, you know, if you would want to choose whatever is relevant to you, I'm just going to grab a couple of different ones. I'm going to use... Total pop. No, I'm just going to grab population density. Uh, it always gives you total population, and I'm going to get. Um, let's see. Unemployment. Uh, da, da, da. I'm going to grab median household income. So I just did a con control click and got both of those, and I added them. Click, click to add. Uh, now we see they're both down here. I'm going to go to show results. Okay, and. Um, doesn't look like much when you get it right here. Uh, this is just a report. Uh, you can page through to view all the different census tract results here. Uh, what you really want is a data download. Uh, don't go and grab the Excel version. I know this is tempting. What this will do is basically give it to you formatted in a table like this, when really, if you're adding this to ArcGIS, you need it in, in just a raw data table. Um, a couple of things I recommend when you're going to start exporting this from the data download tab is to um, just go ahead and grab all the geographic uh, identifiers. Get the column labels, because uh, this will help you identify which columns are which. And then I also like to get the uh, database-friendly column names. So I usually just select all of those. And then you can just hit Sense Track Data, and it will start your download. Um, I've got mine saved in a, in a little data directory here for Boulder County. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it here. And I've got that directory open right here. So I've also got my GIS data in here, some shape files uh, for Boulder County and all that stuff. Uh, here's my new um, here's my new file I just downloaded. One thing I'm going to do, um, and I'm just going to do this for the sake of demonstration because uh, you'll you'll see in a minute. I'm going to I'm just going to make a copy of this one before I open it up. So I've got now this original one and a copy. So um, first things first, uh, it's a CSV file. It's a comma separated value. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you can read it in Excel. You can also, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to open it with uh, Notepad. And we see the raw data here. We've got a bunch of columns, and they're all separated by a column. And um, so I'm going to close that out. And I'm just going to double click on this. Open in Excel. A um, couple things. So, first, we have um, two header columns because I asked it to do that for us. Uh, this is just helpful because it tells you what it is. If you're only looking at the 
the database friendly ones, which are these, um, you don't always know what it is you're looking at. So we have a FIPS code. FIPS is just the system. It's a bunch of uh, identifying uh, stuff. It's actually all of these things, all these numbers here that you're looking at concatenated together. So 813, 12, 101, uh, it's right there. That's just the code. O 08 is Colorado. Um, if we scroll all the way to the right of this, we will see um, we will see our variables that we that we went and grabbed. So we had a population density right here. We have um, median household income right here. And uh, actually, that's, yep, there it is. And those are really the only ones we wanted. So usually, I recommend that people just get rid of the variables that you don't want, because it just makes it for a lot of clutter. So what I'm just going to do, I've got my total pop right here. I've got pop density. I've got this. Uh, we don't necessarily need area land in this scenario. Uh, it's built in the GIS data anyway. If you did need it, I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to go and just uh, select all these columns over here. And they're a bunch of blanks anyway. And I'm just going to get rid of all these. OK, so now I'm just limited to the ones I want. Um, now, one reason I recommend grabbing the, the database friendly ones, uh, the friendly database friendly column headers, is because um, you may have experienced this in the past. ArcMap, when you bring in uh, some sort of data table, it only likes uh, it doesn't like any sort of column header that has spaces in it. It doesn't like any um, anything longer than than uh, ten characters. So um, now that you know what these are, then I just recommend renaming this one to something like M H H I for median household income. Would rename this one Pop Dense. Uh, maybe this one Total Pop like that. Um, and then I'm just going to get rid of the rest of these. Okay. Now. Um, we think this is ready to go. Uh, let's work on joining it to our, our data in ArcMap. So I'm going to save this. It's going to say, hey, um, if you save in CSV, do you want to keep using that? Yes, it's fine for now. Um, we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Um, close this out. And we're going to go back to ArcMap. OK. Now to add a table in ArcMap is really easy. I've got my catalog over here. I've already got my uh, uh, my data drive loaded up, and um, I'm just going to refresh this real quick. If you find that your files are missing, uh, you need to just do a refresh, and then you'll see things show up. So here's my my two new files. So um, I'm just going to drag over this one I just worked on, and okay, let's take a look at two things. So when we're joining these data together, um, let's take a look at the the attribute table for our shape file. We have a bunch of identifiers here. Note we have a geo ID 10. Um, if you're working in tiger line files, this is the FIPS code column. Um, and that's all we have. We have a few other things, and that's about it. Mostly just identifying information. Then if we look over at our, OK, now here's the same table that we just looked at in Excel. So when you're joining a data table to a shape file, you're always going to do that based on a, a column that you have that is similar in both files. So we've got a GeoFIPS here. It's the same as the GeoID uh, in, in our other table. So uh, what you can do here is a couple things. So first, go to uh, right click on your shape file, joins and relates, and go to join. Now, this is when you tell it which columns to base that join on. So we're looking at our shape file. And we say GeoID 10. That was our FIPS code. It already knows you've got a a, uh, a table in here. And we can look at our fields here and choose our uh, GeoFIPS. Except this is when things start to go haywire. Uh, except that it's not listed here. OK. And we're like, well, why is it? So let's take a closer look. Now, if we, if we look again here at GeoID 10, we'll note that there is a 0 in front of our FIPS code. OK, if we 
open our table, note that that's missing. So what's this all about? Um, first of all, let's take a look at our layer properties. And we can go to uh, the Fields tab, go down to GeoID 10, and we'll see that it is a text data type. Okay. If we do the same thing for our CSV and go to GeoFips, we'll notice that it's double, it's numeric. Um, that's no good. You can't join the text to a numeric. So this is a really common problem people run into when they're working with their data um, in Excel. Um, Excel will take a, a, if I were to show you something, um, let's look at this copy that I made. Um, and I'm going to open this up in text. In a, in a notepad. And we'll see here that the zero, the leading zero is preserved in front of a, um, in front of our GeoFIPS field. Um, that's because it is as text here in the CSV. But when we open it up in Excel, it stripped it out and assumed that it was a zero. If we look at this one that we saved a minute ago um, and open this in notepad, look, so all of those zeros have been stripped out. So Excel does that, and then it, you try to pull it into ArcGIS, and it doesn't recognize it either, and then you've got a problem. So this is a major problem with people that are joining tables in, in ArcGIS for the, that are using Excel to prep their data. So uh, I want to walk through fixing this so you can make it work. Um, now, a lot, of, a lot of states, you know, they don't start with a zero. Uh, it might start with a one or a two or some other number. If that's the case, it's still as text, and you still have to fix it. You just don't have to fix the leading zero. So I'm going to walk you through both those steps. Um, if you're working with a state that um, doesn't have a leading zero, um, you can skip this first part, but you still have to reformat it as text. OK, so we got our CSV back open here. We're going to add our zero back in. This is the easiest way I have found to do it. There are many other ways. Um, we're going to insert a new column here. We're going to do a concatenate function. So what we'll do is start by typing equal sign, and then start typing concat. It will autofill. Uh, you, you need to hit the tab button. And then concatenate basically lets you concatenate together either free text or the text of two different cells together. And I'm going to do just free text and put a zero in. We'll start with a, a double quote, uh, zero, close double quote, comma, and that moves us on to the next value that we're going to uh, join together with it. I'm just going to select this A2, close parentheses, and enter. OK. Then uh, all we need to do to complete this field for the rest of our values here is uh, there's a little green box right here. If you double click it, we'll fill down the rest of the, the column for you all the way to the bottom. And now, so we have this done. Uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm just going to add GeoID as a column header here. I'm going to take this whole column, copy it, and then paste as a value. If I didn't do that, uh, what we have currently is really just a vet. It's, it's really just a formula. And it's just showing us the output of the formula. What we really want is the value of the formula in there. So I'm going to. Select the whole column, copy, paste its values. Right. Now, if you didn't have that leading uh, zero, you could, um, and you didn't need to fix that part, you could just go in here and um, select, select your whole column here, change the text, which is down here. So if you don't have the leading zero, try that approach. Uh, but one thing you finally need to do is save this as an Excel. So right now we're working still in the raw CSV. We can go to File, Save As, uh, go back to my data folder. Um, note that the default is whatever currently it is. It's a CSV, so I'm going to change that and make it an Excel workbook. Um, I'm going to name it Boulder County Tract variables. And I did this already earlier today. Um, so I'm going to save over this one. Save. Yes. OK, now I'm going to restart ArcMap here. 
close this out. Okay, I'm going to go back to my Boulder County data folder. There's my new uh, Excel document in there. I've got my uh, Boulder County track shape file. I'm going to add both of these. When you're adding an Excel sheet, you need to hit the little drop down arrow and grab the actual uh, sheet that you're working with. Add that. Now, if I were to right click and open my new table that I just worked on, we'll see that we've added our column. It preserved our leading zero. Um, it's um, justified to the left as opposed to this column, which is justified to the right. That tells us that it's actually text, like the rest of these, and we're good to go. So, finally, the last step after doing all that data prep, let's go back and do our join. So, I'm going to start by right clicking on uh, Boulder County Tracks, go to Joins and Relates, Join. This time, we're going to go in and select GeoID 10, just like before, and from here, we, got, we just need to select our GeoID column that we created. You can click uh, Validate Join. Check, 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 check. OK, OK. Now right click on our attribute table. And if we scroll all the way to the right, we'll see that we've added our new data to our shapefile. Bingo, bango, bongo. Um, the final last step uh, that you want to do is uh, what I recommend doing would be uh, going right clicking on your your, uh, your shapefile and export this to a new shapefile. That essentially will make that join permanent. So you'll permanently add that. If at this point you were to remove uh, this table from the document, um, you would break your join. Um, but you can basically make it permanent by going to right click data, export data. And then uh, put it into your folder where you're keeping all your stuff. Uh, give it a good name. Uh, I like to save my things as a shapefile. If you're working in a geodatabase, you can put it there. Save it as a geodatabase uh, feature class. We'll call it Boulder Co. Variables or whatever. Save it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now, if I uh, get rid of this, get rid of this. Now we've got our final shape file. You go back one more time, look at the attribute table. Everything's there as we want it, and you can start doing your analysis or your visualizations. So, that is a rundown of how to uh, join tabular data from the census to a shape file. Um, there's a bunch of little tricks in there. Uh, that can that can really trip you up. Um, so hopefully this will help you out as you're going through and uh, doing your work and joining tables to shapefiles. So that's all for now. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line at philip.white at coloradoedu. And, uh, oh, P.S., um, one quick note is that one way, if you want to skip all this crap that we just did, is to use QGIS, which is free and open source software, and it actually doesn't have all these problems. You can join... Uh, without all these extra steps. Uh, so that's all for real, and talk to you later.